Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this public hearing uh, of the Committee on Public Works is hereby called to order. Um, since the previous hearing uh, was just suspended, uh, uh, we can now um, resume the, meet the, the meeting. This time, I would like to, uh, to ask the Committee Secretary to acknowledge our guest. Uh, Good morning, Mr. Chairman. The following resource persons are present today. Director Ramon Ariola, DPWH Flood, Flood Control. Director Alex Bote, DPWH PPP. Director Constantino Constante Llanes, DPWH Planning Service. Yusek Mark Richmond de Leon, Officer in Charge, Department of Transportation. Attorney Chris Asek Romano Artes from the MMDA and Mr. Giorgio Garcia, General Manager, MMDA. Mr. Ferdinand A. Pexon, Executive Director, PPP Center. Mr. Ricardo Samaniego, Chairman, Philippine Coalition of Consumer Welfare. Engineer Michael T. Aguilar, Engineer 5, City of Las Piñas. Engineer Alfredo Garin from Pasig City, City Engineer. Engineer Francisco V. Agamata, Engineer 4 from Paranaque City. Engineer Baby Ruth Senaida, City Engineer of Malabon City. Engineer Edwin Havaluya, City Engineer 1, Pasay City. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Committee Secretary. I would like to thank all the guests uh, present here for giving this time, uh, this hearing. Um, this uh, public hearing was called here today to discuss several bills, resolutions, and a privileged speech uh, referred to my committee. Uh, first, uh, first discussion, the bills on public-private uh, uh, partnership. Uh, we have uh, Senate Bill Number 1515, uh, Public-Private uh, Partnership Act, filed by Senator Drilon. I also filed my version to this uh, bill, uh, Senate Bill uh, 190. Pub, uh, public uh, private partnership uh, for the people or uh, P4 uh, Act of the Philippines. <coughs> um, would like to ask the, these questions to uh, uh, PPP Center. Um, what is your position the, on the two bills uh, referred to this uh, committee? Um, Honorable uh, Senator Pacquiao, uh, Chairman of this uh, committee, uh, other members of the committee and fellow fellow uh, employees of government, good morning po sa atin lahat. Um, the PPP Center had been uh, working together with other agencies of government, both in the executive branch and also in the legislative branch, uh, towards uh, reforming the regulatory framework for public-private partnerships. This framework, which we seek to reform, consists of the BOT law, which was legislated in 1990 and then amended in 1994. We also have the NEDA JV guidelines, which was last amended in 2013. And we also have the numerous PPP codes issued by local Sangunian councils of local government units. So one can say that we have a framework that is quite fragmented and distributed across uh, different uh, uh, functions. We could summarize the need for reforms uh, in four, in four uh, areas. First is the need to accelerate delivery of infrastructure. Second is the need for greater value for money through enhanced competition among private parties vying for a project, the need to strengthen governance of PPPs, and the need to strengthen the protection of public interest. So let me just uh, explain uh, more deeply what, what we mean by each one of these. Acceleration requires, among other things, that government be able to get to implementation stage earlier which in turn means that processes leading to that stage need to be accelerated as well. 
We therefore need to identify bottlenecks that slow down decision making. Examples are unnecessary restrictions applied to unsolicited proposals. Still, another example would be cases where an LGU could not proceed with a joint venture due to the absence of an enabling local ordinance. We can also accelerate by embedding in the new PPP Act measures that have proven to hasten PPP processes, such as the capacity building function of the PPP Center, the assist assistance to implementing agencies provided by the Project Development Monitoring Facility, and the use of dispute resolution mechanisms. As for greater value of money, we can say in, 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 in our language, we can explain this in terms of the word sulit na sulit. So, gusto natin na maging sulit na sulit ang PPP dahil nagkaroon ng masusing pagpili ng pinakamahusay na alok o proposal sa isang patas na labanan. And for strengthening governance of PPPs, this, to this is to address potential conflicts of interest that jeopardizes either the quality or the cost of delivered public service, to align projects of different agencies to a common spa spa spatial plan or strategy, to institutionalize PPP policy-making function, which is currently being served by the PPP governing board headed by the Secretary of NEDA, to institutionalize monitoring functions of the PPP Center, and to institutionalize risk management programs related to contingent liabilities. As for strengthening the protection of public interest, this will be in the areas of project appraisal and approval, performance monitoring of projects, and also taking on obligations and contingent liabilities by government. To summarize, proposals are now on the table to reform the PPP regulatory framework. One, to accelerate the delivery of infrastructure and related services. Second, to achieve greater for value for money through enhanced competition. Third, to strengthen governance of PPPs. And fourth, to strengthen the protection of public interest. I apologize, uh, Senator, that that was quite a long answer to your question. But regarding the two bills uh, on hand, uh, I understand that there will be a technical working group uh, after this hearing where all the details... Na yung, na review na yung dalawang bills na if uh, naka-refer dito sa committee ko, na-review nyo na? Um, sinusimulan pa lang po namin dahil natanggap po namin kailan lang po itong dalawang bills. Uh -huh. So ito po ay sinusuri namin ngayon. At pagka nagkaroon po ng technical working group, we will present yung details po ng aming uh, comments. Okay. Um, can you give us uh, uh, one of your projects na nat natapos na um, implemented by uh, uh, PPP Center? Um, Pwede niyo ba kami bigyan ng ano, na example? Uh, what project is that? Opo, ma may bibigyan ko kayo ng mga examples. Uh, liliwanagin ko lang po isang bagay po, uh, Senator, kung, kung uh, inyo pong mamarapatin. Yung, yung implementation po kasi ng projects ay hindi po sa PPP Center. Yung po ay yung mga ahensya ng yung tinatawag natin implementing agencies. I understand, agencies. but um, uh, so just, just give me an example na natapos na by oh, PPP. Na dumaan po sa amin. Oh, oh. Yes. So isa po doon itong uh, operating na po na Mactan Cebu International uh, airport, yung po and Terminal and 2. International, po international Airport? Mactan Cebu International Airport. Okay. Oh. Sa, yung po ay operational. Yung Terminal 2 po ay uh, operational na. Yung Terminal 1 po ongoing po yung uh, modernization po nito. Uh, sa DepEd naman po, nagkaroon po tayo ng dalawang uh, projects uh, para sa school buildings naman po, tinatawag na Phase 1 and then Phase 2 uh, school buildings. Now, in terms po ng mga ongoing na mga PPP projects, yung pong Clark uh, International Airport Expansion uh, uh, is PPP. ongoing. That's a PPP, PPP project also, din po. Okay. How's the, uh, the um, can you explain to us the, the, bid, the bidding process, bidding process about the PPP? Is there a bidding process? Bidding process. Uh, apo, uh, mari po malaman, ano po yung katanungan sa bidding? Bidding process about the uh, implementing the PPP. 
Oh, so depende po sa ano hong legal framework ang sinusunod sa banggit ko kanina tatlo po yon. Kung sa BOT law po, uh, depende rin ho kung solicited uh, process, meaning ang gobyerno po ang nag-develop uh, ng project at nag-invite po sila ng offers sa, sa private uh, parties to participate. So example na po doon yung Mactan Cebu International Airport. Kung hindi ho ako nagkakamali, mga pito ho ang nag-bid doon sa project na yon. Meron naman pong unsolicited proposal tulad po ng airport na itatayo sa Bulacan, uh, New Manila International Airport na naging uh, uh, award po recently ng ng Department of Transportation. So may uh, proseso din sinusunod? May Meron proseso pong uh, proseso ng sinusunod. Uh, what is your um, uh, comment about the uh, bidding process at DPWH? Uh, magandang, mga, magandang magandang umaga po, Honorable Chair and uh, co-public servants. Well, uh, on the side of the Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, tama po yung binabanggit ni, uh, ng, PP, ng head ng ating pong PPP Center na uh, it's the, la the line agency na siya po yung implementing uh, arm for the PPP projects. Now, with regards naman po sa proseso natin sa pagbibiding, tama rin po si ang PPP Center na we have two uh, kinds of uh, projects as PPP. One is the unsolicited and the other one the solicited. Yung solicited po, ito po yung ina-identify ng uh, line agency. Yung po yung uh, talagang nasa roster ng mga identified projects ng uh, isang ahensya, either D Department of Transportation or DPWH. Ang uh, proseso po ng pagba, yung tinatalong po nyo po, uh, honorable chair, yung proseso ng procurement and bidding of this project, when we identify the project, may sinusunod po tayong mga timelines okay. dito. Pag na-identify na po natin siya, uh, uh, at uh, sa identification na yon, may ginagawa po tayong aral. Two ways po yon. Regular projects po natin kasi it's a one-way thing that we just do the study of the feasibility study. But now, we do in two ways pag PPP What's the difference of the uh, procurement law process uh, to this? Uh, uh, it's a, uh, 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 katiting lang po ang diferensya niya kasi uh, ina-advertise lang din po natin to. Pero prior to advertisement of a PPP project, we will see to it po na financially viable siya. Yun lang po yung pagkakaiba niya actually do sa mga regular projects, either foreign assisted or regular projects. Kasi ang regular projects po nating mga big tickets, basta nakapasa po ito sa feasibility study, economically viable, ngayon po yata parang 10% and above, eh pwede na po natin siyang i-procure. But in the PPP project po, even the PPP project has been identified and it comes out na more than 10% ng kanyang economic return, kinakailangan po din nating i-check ang kanyang viability financially. Kasi po pwede pong dumating yung pagkakataon na kahit economically viable ang proyekto, eh baka po wala naman pong takers kasi hindi naman po siya maging financially viable. In, the pro in a way of processing, halos ganun din po, uh, ganun din po ang uh, sistema ng bidding. Uh, everything, konting-konti uh, lang po ang diferensya niya. At uh, always pasado po tapat ito sa NEDA board. You mean konti-konti lang diferensya sa procurement law? Yes sir, ganun din po, uh, ina-advertise din po natin. May mga timeline lang po tayong sinusunod based from the, build of, the BOT law, yung Republic Act 7718, uh, Honorable okay. Chair. Uh, sinusunod yun rin yung due process ng... Ano? Yes, yes, Honorable. Um, the LGU is um, required to coordinate with the PPP? Do we need the, to coordinate the PPP? Hindi, Project yeah, LGU? Hindi po sila required, uh, Senator, but, pero ang ginagawa po ng PPP Center ay lumalapit po kami sa kanila at ino-offer po namin ang aming assistance uh, sa maraming bagay. Isang assistance po yung makabuo sila ng PPP code nila na sangkop, angkop para sa akin nilang pangangailangan. Uh, nandun na rin po yung assistance sa capacity building. Uh, dahil po ang uh, PPP ay isang Uh, maituturing natin ang mas complicated na proseso para makapag-taguyo uh, tayo ng infrastruktura na nilalaman ng isang kontrat kontrata ng public at saka private na tumatagal hanggang, hanggang 20-30 taon. Kaya kailangan pong uh, makapag-build up ng capacity ang, ang local governments para ma-manage po ang buong proseso. At nagbibigay din po kami ng legal services para naman dun sa mga meron na mga existing projects at nagkakaroon sila ng mga katanungan. Uh, tumutulong naman po kami sa, sa pag-address po ng kanilang mga katanungan. Tinutulungan nyo yung mga LGUs uh, to enter into a PPP? Oh, uh, yung pong, uh, uh, hindi po lahat sa ngayon pero ino-offer po natin itong servisyo ito para sa lahat. Mm, okay. 
um, the national, uh, the old national government projects uh, with PPP, uh, go through PPP center. Ganun ba? Lahat ng ano? Siguro lewagin lang po natin yung go through the PPP center. Uh, yung pong mga ina-assist po namin ng mga ehensya, uh, dahil po yun doon sa nagkaroon po ng kasunduan, na magtulungan po kami. Meron po mga projects na hindi na kami nag assist sa ahensya. So, bibigyan ko example. Yung una, uh, yung sa Mactan Cebu International Airport, nag-assist po kami dyan sa DOTR para mai, uh, maibid po yung proyekto. Doon naman po sa Bulacan uh, Airport o yung New Manila International Airport sa Bulacan, hindi po kami nag-assist po doon dahil yung po ay isang unsolicited proposal na ang evaluation ay ginawa na po ng, initial evaluation rather, ginawa po ng uh, DOTR. Pero um, kailangan ko rin po banggitin na ang PPP Center ay, ay umuupo po doon sa Investment Coordination Committee Technical Board. Ito po yung unang body na nagsusuri ng mga umaakyat na mga propose, uh, sorry, mga projects sa NEDA or sa ICC. So kasama po kami doon sa technical board uh, tulad ng uh, DOF, Department of Finance, DBM, at iba pa hong ahensya. May I know your, your office, PPP, uh, are you under the, the president or uh, GOCC? Uh, Naka-attach po kami sa NEDA. Ah, sa NEDA kayo uh, naka-attach. Uh, Uh, before we continue, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator, the Maj Majority Leader, uh, Senator uh, uh, Subiri. Morning, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm lapit na. Ano, ano, ano? Okay. Okay. So you are under the uh, NEDA, um, not under the, the office of the president. Tama po yun sa senator. How much your uh, uh, revolving uh, uh, funds under the project of development of monitoring facilities? Yung, I mean, yam po ay sa kabuuan po niya nasa sa 103 million dollars. Yam po ay uh, pinag uh, nagshare po yan ang ang uh, gobyerno po natin at ang uh, government po ng Australia. And at ang pondo po ay uh, minamanage ng uh, ng PPP Center kasama po ang Asian Development Bank. Sa, saan ang galing yung pundo nyo? Saan ang galing yung pundo na yan? Uh, government appropriations po nung, uh, nung time po ng uh, Pinoy administration. Mm, okay. Ano ba yan? Taon-taon? Taon-taon ba yan? Na budget? Binabad, may nakalaan sa oh, inyo? The, the, way it, uh, the way it works po, Senator, ay... Uh, every time merong assistance na ibibigay ang PPP Center sa isang government agency sa, sa pagbuo ng feasibility study, for example, uh, di mga ngailangan po yan ng mga consultants. So, meron po kaming panel ng mga international mm. and local consultants na handa pong uh, uh, tumulong sa pagbuo nito mga studies na ito. At uh, kung, kung mat kung matuloy po yung project at meron hong nanalong bidder tulad nga po nung nabanggit na nating project Mactan Cebu International Airport, ang magbabayad po doon sa services ng consultants ay yung pong nanalong bidder. So yung pribadong sektor po magbabayad. So nare-replenish po yung pondo. Kasi initially babayaran muna ng PPP Center tapos uh, i-reimburse -re -re po tayo nung nanalong bidder. In that way, tuloy-tuloy po na may available na pondo para matulungan naman ng iba-ibang ahensya. Let's say uh, you have project. Uh, how long uh, the, the bidding process or to, pro to process the, the papers para maano? Gano'ng katagal yung i-process yung mga papers uh, sa isang uh, project? Gano'ng uh, katagal? Depende po sa... Mas mabilis ba o mas matagal? 
iba-iba ho nakita namin uh, sa mga nakaraang proyekto meron hong mga uh, projects tulad ng Clark Airport uh, ONM mabilis ho itong na i bid out uh, itong proyektong to meron naman hong mga proyekto na buwa balik po uli sa approving body dahil nagkakaroon ho ng uh, pagbabago sa sa struktura ng proyekto, tumatagal po. Okay. Uh, be before you continue, um, I would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of Senator uh, Bong Rebilla Jr. Uh, please uh, continue. So, po, uh, tulad nung nabanggit ko kanina, uh, ang, 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 tan ang katanungan, uh, gano'ng katagal ang bidding process pa para sa isang PPP, uh, nagdidepende po yun sa kung Kung well-defined na po yung, yung project at, uh, at uh, tinututukan din ng, uh, ng ahensya na nagmay-ari ng project, maari po itong magawa ng mas maigsing panahon tulad po ng Clark Airport uh, nung ito po ay binid pareho po yung sa expansion at saka yung sa O&M. Meron naman po mga proyekto na medyo tumatagal ho dahil bumabalik-balik ho. May mga katanungan during the uh, bidding itself at maaring uh, i-question din ho ng losing bidder na nagkakaroon pa ho ng pagtatalo. So, uh, ang isang masasabi ko talaga, uh, gaya na nasabi ko na rin po kanina, ang isang bagay na makakatulong po para mabilis ang uh, bidding ay na-develop na mahusay, uh, maigi yung proyekto ng uh, lahat ng angulo na naisuri na para pagka binid out na, tuloy-tuloy na. Make sure lang doon sa process uh, na hindi maargabyado yung government din natin pagdating sa PPP. Sa pag-process ng mga projects na yan sa PPP, make sure lang na hindi argabyado yung uh, government. Isang bagay din ho yun. No? Isang bagay din ho yun na uh, nabanggit ko nga ho yung protection ho public interest kanina. Uh, yun din ho ang ibig kong sabihin na dapat masiguro po natin uh, whether it's a national project or a local project, LGU project, or a project of the GOCC, that uh, first of all, uh, it is a project that is aligned with our development plans. Uh, and that uh, in the process of uh, choosing uh, the private partner, that this be done in a fair, open, and competitive manner. Uh, Doon po natin nakukuha talaga ang best benefits sa, sa publico. But I should also mention na sa pag uh, nag-offer ho tayo ng project for bidding, uh, yung tinatawag po natin na project structure ay dapat uh, pabor din ho sa publiko, sa gobyerno. Meaning, hindi ho tayo kumukuha ng obligasyon, sa naglalagay ng obligasyon ng gobyerno sa kontrata na hindi natin matutuparan dahil pagka hindi tayo nakakatupad sa obligasyon ay may katumbas ho usually na na penalty ho yun tama, sa tama, tama. That's why I asked you about the, the participation of LGO uh, when you uh, implementing a, a, a PP pro PPP project. Um, about the uh, last, uh, about the uh, DPWH, um, um, what's your uh, um, stand or opinion about the processing process? Uh, magandang maga po, Honorable Chair and uh, Honorable Senators. In the bidding process naman po, uh, Wala naman ho kami nagiging masyadong uh, issue rito or problema. Actually, yung nabanggit ko po kanina na tungkol sa relativity niya dun sa regular projects natin, dito po sa solicited projects ng PPP, uh, isa lang po yung medyo pagkakaiba. May mga one-on-one -on -one na discussion po to sa mga, sa mga bidders po natin. Yun lang naman po. Yung isa lang po na hindi ko naipaliwanag kanina, yung tungkol sa unsolicited proposal. Yun lang po, kasi dalawa po siya, solicited and unsolicited. In unsolicited proposal, medyo mas maigsi po ang nagiging sitwasyon dito na para ma-procure natin na maaga at ma-onboard kung sino man ang magiging concessionaire natin dito. Because in an unsolicited proposal project, ang nagko-conduct po ng study nito at pag-aaral, feasibility and the financial viability, ay eh yung pong concessionaire natin. At sila po ay nag identify ng ipinopropose po nila sa ating national government na proyekto. And with that, nagiging mas maigsi po. Kesa po dumaan tayo doon sa, da, sa yung ating traditional type of PPP na solicited. Doon po kasi ang nagko-conduct pa po ng aral ng, ng feasibility and uh, economic viability niya ay eh, yung pa pong ating line agency na kinakailangan pa po tayong mag-procure. 
na by now nga po, nagawa natin ng konting paraan para makompress yung timeline because beforehand, nung araw po kasi, ang ginagawang procurement, magpo-procure ka po muna para sa economics, sa feasibility study. Then pag feasible siya, another, another thing is magpo-procure ka na naman ho para sa financial viability. By now po, ang ini-implement po ng Department of Public Works and Highways, if ever not there, we are going to procure consultant, eh, packages, package na po, uh, economic and financial. So, nakatipin po tayo rito sa proseso na to ng mga, I think siguro po, mga siyam na unggan sampung buwan bago ma-implement ang ating proyekto. Ah, ganun ba? Gano, okay. ka, gano katagal na lang? Uh, uh, actually po, uh, typically, pag na-identify na po natin yung proyekto, lumad, nasa 600 calendar days po hanggang ma-onboard natin ng concessionaires. Eh. Uh, mga ganun po. Yan ang, ang, ang hmm. uh, tinitingnan ko eh. Hmm. Yung pag-process lang ng project, may alil, say, we have a, a big project. Uh, taon ang bibilangin mo bago bago mo umpisan may start so bakit bakit ganun kaya katagal bakit bakit ganun katagal no uh, i'm thinking about it na uh, pag process pa lang ng mga papers minimum of one year two years three years nasasayang yung panahon eh na pwede naman natin i-process ng 3 uh, months sa uh, uh, makumpleto natin yung mga papers di ba possible naman yan eh. Kahit na unless walang budget yung uh, project, ay uh, matatagalan talaga. Pero kung may budget naman, uh, bakit tumagatagal pa ng... Uh, 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 maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, ano, honorable Chair. Ganito po kasi yun. Uh, malaking punto po yung nabanggit nyo tungkol dun sa sistema ng uh, pagpaproses natin in connection with the timeline. Kasi po, for example, we're talking of uh, unsolicited proposal project. Kinakailangan po mag-submit sila ng apat na dokumento, draft contract, yung mga background ng kanyang kumpanya. In seven days po, dapat po, aksyon na ng gobyerno. Kung kulang po yun, di magbabalik-balik nga po yun. Now, after that, clause 10.5 po ron para sa completeness. Yung clause 10.7, sinasabi naman dito, kinakailangan bago ka mag-issue ng uh, original proponent status, may 13 calendar days na naman, 30, uh, may 30, mga ganun po. Kung makukompress po natin ito from one by one, malaki po ang magiging epekto para, ma, para umigsi po ang timeline na. Kasi yun lang pong Swiss challenge, ang sinasabi po doon sa BOT law, 60 days po yun. Ganun po yun. So yung 60, kung mabidiminish mo siya ng 45, nakasave ka na naman ng 15. Uh, siguro po yun ang pwede natin pagbigyan ng pansin na para maging uh, mas magaan at mas magisi po ang timeline bago tayo maka-implement. Can you, can you uh, submit to the committee uh, secretary your uh, position and, and suggestion about that uh, issue? I importante yes, yan, importante yan. Yes, ano na, Walt? Do you have uh, anything? Salamat po, uh, Mr. Senator. Uh, gusto ko lang hong uh, dugtungan yung nabanggit po ni Director Bote kanina uh, tungkol po doon sa unsolicited uh, process. No? Uh, Tama po yung sinabi niya na pagka uh, unsolicited, yung po ay uh, pag sinalang na po sa gobyerno, yung po ay nagawa na ng feasibility study ng pribadong sektor. Ngunit, uh, hindi lang po yun ang prosesong uh, dadaanan. Meron pang negotiation. Ang problema po sa unsolicited proposal, hinuhulaan ng pribadong sektor ang pangangailangan ng gobyerno. Kaya nga unsolicited eh. Kasi pagka-solicited kasi, sinasabi ng gobyerno, ito ang pangangailangan namin, ito ang aming mga requirements, ito yung mga dapat yung tuparin. Pag unsolicited, wala yun. So, ito ngayon ng pribadong sektor, magsasalang ng proposal, wala silang guidance kung anong pangangailangan talaga ng gobyerno, ano ang mga requirements, ano ang mga, ano mga hihingi ng gobyerno. So, mabilis ngang maisalang, ngunit pagdating naman sa negotiation, ang haba. Mahaba ang negotiation process dahil doon pa lang sasabihin ng gobyerno, ah, ito yung aming mga gusto mangyari, ito ang inyong mga dapat tuparin. At kaya tinawag na negotiation, ah, kailangan both sides mag-agree. So ito rin ho ang isang ah, dapat malaman ng publiko na disadvantage naman ng unsolicited proposal. Nagkakaroon ng mahabang negosyasyon. Tulad po ng sa Bulacan Airport, medyo may kahabaan po ang negotiation. Now, yung pong katanungan ninyo, bakit ganun ho kahaba ang pagdating sa public-private partnership? Pagka uh, traditional procurement po, yung tinatawag po natin dumaan sa 9184, ang kontrato po niya mahaba na ho siguro dalawa o tatlong taon magtayo. Dahil ang ina-focus lang ho natin, construction lang Tama, ho. dalawa o tatlong taon. Ang pag-process naman ang, din, ganun pag, din. Ang hindi po, yung pag, uh, ang, ang i-deliver na infrastructure, i-deliver within two to three years, 
or can be can be one year pero pagka sa public private partnership po ang kontrata ang duration po ng kontrata ang tinutukoy po natin ito po ay umaabot hanggang 50 taon ang pinakamahabang inaalaw po ng BOT law so sa sa kahabaan po ng panahon maari marami po ang kailangan pag-usapan na na obligasyon ng magkabila ang partido both sa private at saka sa public yun po ang magkaroon po ng agreement sa ganung klaseng kontrata ang nagpapahaba po ng ano ng Senator uh, Rebilla is recognized. Yeah. Ah. Ang ibig mo sabihin ang problema natin nasa batas, nasa BOT law ang problema. Ay hindi po yung Bakit nature ano cause of oh. delay. Yung ang um, pinapaliwan ko po Senator, oh. yung pong bakit mas komplikado po ang kontrata na susuriin ng gobyerno ang pagdating sa eh, public private partnership. 50 years kung pag-aaralan niyo diyan. Eh yung pong haba yung ng haba, kontrata po. Right. Oh, oh, yung duration po ng kontrata. Kasi kasama na rin po doon na pag natapos yung kontrata, anong obligasyon ng private partner sa gobyerno pag turnover naman nung no, no, project, project, pabalik sa gobyerno, pati po yun pag-uusapan din ho. Yung po mga ganon, hindi pinag-uusapan pagdating sa kontrata ng traditional procurement dahil maigsi lang po ang mga kontrata. Mm. So, um, <coughs> pwede ka ba mag-submit ng suggestion o position mo, uh, pati sa yung DPWH, para mapaganda natin itong... Uh, uh, batas natin sa about sa PPP. Um, kung kung uh, hindi po mamarapatin na uh, Senator, uh, meron po ngayong binubuong tinatawag naming executive version, meaning uh, ng executive branch ng, ng uh, version ng PPP Act din na nakapaloob doon yung mga gusto mangyari ng executive branch and dahil kami po ay kasama po sa executive branch, eh, kailang umalign po kami doon sa, sa kanila. Imbis na magsasabit ng hiwalay na posisyon ng PPP Center, ang isasalang po namin sa inyo ay yung executive version. Yes, uh, kasi pag uh, samasamahin natin yan, consolidate natin lahat yan, tapos uh, kung ano yung um, ikabubuti at mapabilis natin na hindi tayo abutan ng taon-taon uh, uh, siyam-siyam na taon-taon uh, process pa lang, um, mas mapabilis natin lalo ang uh, pag-implement ng mga projects sa atin. Tama po sa Senator. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, alam mo yung palaging delay ng government projects is either the process or the feasibility study. Kasi tuwing nagpapareport tayo ng mga project na sa feasibility study stage, dalawang tatlong taon na. So, sana mapabilis din po yung mga feasibility studies ng iba't ibang ahensya. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's why we're here. Um, uh, we are pre fixing the problem about the uh, process uh, na man napakatagal. Uh, patay na yung kabayo, anhin pa yung palay, wala. <laughs> Kumbaga, ganun yun. So, pakiano lang, um, we might have um, uh, more question about this, so we will um, send letters to your office para uh, kung may mga katanungan kami. Pero as of now, uh, that's all. Um, yan lang muna about sa PPP. And uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ferdinand uh, Pixon and uh, uh, Director Alex Bote of DPWH. Maraming uh, salamat po. Okay. Uh, our uh, already finished the uh, PPP uh, discussion. We're now uh, let's proceed to uh, the, the next topic uh, is on elevated walkways. Um, Senate Bill Number Nine Three Zero, Sustainable Elevated Walkways Act, uh, filed by Senator Po, and uh, the privileged speech of uh, entitled the uh, Elevated Walkways by Senator Sobire. Um, I think uh, uh, they have a presentation about uh, uh, the DOTR has a presentation and I would like to give uh, the floor to Senator Sabiri to ask questions uh, on the elevated the walkways. Uh, probably before uh, opening statement, lang, Chairman, before we uh, ask them to present on elevated walkways. Um, ito po ipapasa ko po sa inyo na yun. Uh, ito po yung speech ko in August of 2016. Uh, that was my very first speech in the uh, 17th Congress, and my very first speech in this Congress was also this, reiterating the program and project that we had discussed for three years in the last Congress. Na maraming pangako, yun nga, katulad na sinabi mo, uh, Chairman, patay na yung kabayo. Eh, 
ito bagong bagong uh, congress na naman ito sana wag naman abuti ng ibang presidente ng mag-implement nito so uh, it's uh, it's really pushing for alternative routes for people to take no kung gusto nila maglakad gusto nila magsakay uh, ng bus gusto nila magsakay ng MRT kung gusto po nila magsakay ng kanilang sariling sasakyan uh, they have that option And the reason why I took this up, uh, Mr. Chairman, dahil pag-ikot ko sa ibang bansa, katulad ng Thailand, Shanghai, sa China, sa um, uh, Europe recently when uh, I had an opportunity to visit, marami po silang mga walkways, whether it is uh, bike lanes, walkways, elevated pathways, greenways, and green lanes. Um, this is not very difficult to set up. Uh, and sana unahin natin yung EDSA man lang para at least yung mga tao, kababayan natin, kung gusto nila maglakad, imbis na apat na oras sa bus, baka mas mabilis pa yung isang oras. Dahil yung isang oras, you can cover about, uh, maybe slow walking, you can cover about five kilometers. Five to six kilometers easy walk. Kung meron ka pang area dun para sa scooter, may maliit na electric scooter, and usong-uso yan sa Europe, daladala nila yung bike sa backpack, tatanggalin yung bike, it's a disassemble, you can assemble it really quick, and then you can bike. It will take you even less, maybe 20 minutes to 30 minutes. So yung stretch from Makati to Ortigas is only 6 kilometers. What would be a walk of about 2 to 3 hours sometimes in a very bad day would be oh, about 45 to 1 hour walking. Mas, mas healthy pa. At uh, lalong lalakas pa ang ating mga kababayan. I notice in other countries, they do a lot of walking. Singapore is a walking city. Uh, maganda po yung mga pathways nila. Underground pa yung ibang mga pathways nila. So, um, let's, I want to ask the agencies, Mr. Chair, um, are they prepared for this? Because the last time we talked to the MMDA, meron silang plan of action. They spoke to the DOTR. Uh, Yusek De Leon, we also, you also committed, as a matter of fact, two budget hearings ago, you said there was a budget of about 400 million to start off with the Ortigas area. Pero, uh, when we asked again in the last uh, Um, hearing, I believe, of Senator Grace Poe sa Public Services, na wala na yung pera. Hindi nila alam kung saan pumunta yung pera. So, um, before you make the presentation, we have been gotten commitments from all the senators. After I gave my speech, sabi po nila, let's put it in the budget. So, maghanap kami ng pondo para maging institutional amendment po ito para sa ating mga kababayan dito sa Metro Manila na hirap na hirap sa traffic. This is... Uh, to aid MMDA, uh, to aid uh, the traffic uh, decongestion. <laughs> so, um, with the commitment of our senators, we now have a plan to insert in the budget uh, a minimum of about $1 billion for these elevated walkways. Now, the question is, can you implement this? Because I, we do not want this to be an unimplemented project, once again, funded but unimplemented and the money will be reverted back to the National Treasury or be utilized for something else. Because if not, then we will not waste our time making the institutional insertion. Ang gusto po natin, because the last hearing, sabi po ninyo ay nasa feasibility stage pa. Nakita ko po more or less yung plano. Masyad, it's a bit ambitious yung, yung plano yata ninyo. I think uh, you're going to cover parts of EDSA, then medyo, ano, medyo maganda. But I think you'll need a, several hundred billion pesos for that. Can we do something simpler, sim similar to the Makati walkways, or as I showed you in the picture here in Shanghai, something more simpler, steel structures that we can utilize um, immediately, construct over uh, EDSA um, on one side of the uh, highway. Uh, so we're here now to listen to your proposals and to get uh, seek guidance kung kaya niyo bang gawin ito next year? Kasi tatlong, wala pa ng tap, tatlong taon may, may naiwan kay Presidente, about two and a half years na lang. And uh, I do not know if we can do at least one area that we can implement this greenway, whether it's Quezon City to Ortigas or Ortigas to Makati. One section muna tayo para naman may makitang taong bayan na pagbabago dyan sa EDSA. Hindi lamang uh, mga mukha ng ating mga MMDA nagbabago dun yung at least uh, may, may pagbabago tayong nakikita. So, um, Yusek? Uh, yeah. Thank I you guess we'd like to acknowledge first, uh, Yusek, before we uh, acknowledge you, we'd like to acknowledge uh, Senator Aimee Marcos. We're honored to have you with us. 
and earlier mentioned Senator Bong Revilla. Mr. Secretary. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Siviri. Um, tama po yun nung uh, binanggit nyo mga po nung uh, past uh, public uh, hearing natin sa public services last Octo August uh, 13 that uh, we had uh, previously planned for uh, Ortigas Greenways. Unfortunately, that was funded under the road board funds, yung MVUC funds. And yung uh, MVUC funds na yun, hindi namin na-utilize after the abolition of the road board. So ngayon, all of the monies of this uh, MVUC, the previous collections, are now uh, lodged in uh, DPWH and further collections will be remitted to uh, the Bureau of uh, Treasury. So yun lang po yung uh, kwento, long, long and short of the kwento, is uh, ready na yung implementation sana. Unfortunately, na-abolish po yung road board. You said another fundamental question because we're going to impl if we're going to uh, put funds for this, which department really will be the one doing it? Kasi ang sabi ng DPWH, nakausap ko si, uh, nandito ba taga DPWH? Uh, this gentleman, no? I spoke to um, Undersecretary, uh, our planning, um, Yusek Cabral, Kathy. I had spoken to her, sabi niya, Sen, mabuti nang kami na mag-implement yan uh, instead of the DOTR in terms of project implementation kasi ipapasa din daw sa kanila if it's a government-funded project. So, where do you suggest us to park the funds? Do you suggest us to park it with the DOTR for this particular project? Or should it be an item under the DPWH identifying this particular project? In terms of uh, consent po ipapark, it can work both ways, DOTR, DPWH. But in terms of DOTR, ang importance po ng uh, DOTR is malink natin yung mga major mass transportation uh, infrastructure natin, like our MRT3 uh, infrastructure. If uh, there are commuters right here, alam natin kung gano'n ka pangit sa ngayon yung design ng ating mga MRT3 structures, which, which were done uh, several decades ago. Uh, ang taas ng kailangan mo akyatin na uh, steps, di ba? Uh, kaya yung mga tao, instead of commuting, mabibili na lang kanilang sa sariling sasakyan because of inaccessibility ng ating mga public uh, transport infrastructure. So, uh, that advantage is uh, towards uh, the OTR, but uh, for the rest of the country, pa possibly, uh, it can be uh, both uh, MMDA uh, for Metro Manila and uh, DPWH for the rest of the country. It can work uh, both ways, Mr. Chair. So, Yusek, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, will you have a presentation to uh, provide us so that we can ask further questions? Please? Yes, sir. Very uh, briefly, Mr. Chair, um, I'll just present our plans for the department. As you can see, this is what uh, I'm uh, telling everyone. No? Ito yung, uh, for example, along EDSA, MRT3 stations. Going to your bus stops, napakahirap ng ating connectivity. Ang tawag ko dyan, last mile connectivity. Yes, you have your MRT3 uh, infrastructure along your uh, major roads, but for you to be linked to your offices, to you to be linked to your uh, homes, kailangan mong lakarin yan, uh, so, min, so and so miles, uh, kilometers, without proper infrastructure. Sige, next slide. Like this one, no? Wala man lang maayos na shade uh, infrastructure for our uh, commuters. Uh, so yung commuters, the chance na magkaroon sila ng pera, ang tendency ng mga commuters, bumili ng sasakyan, which even promotes congestion. Next slide. Ito naman, uh, pinapakita, yes, we have sidewalks, yes, we have uh, those elevated walkways, pero block naman ng mga uh, nagtitinda sa ating mga kalsada. Next. And of course, you, you mentioned yung bikeways. So our, our bikeways are not protected by uh, proper facilities. Next. Ito, for example, this one is in Ortigas, right beside a major uh, financing institution. This is on Ortigas MRT. Yung uh, kalsada, kailangan mo tumagilid para uh, yung sidewalk, para makadaan yung mga, pas yung mga commuters. Next slide. So, just, just shows na talagang very poor ang ating infrastructure. Next slide. Next. So, this is, as I explained, the poor... Uh, infrastructure leads to further congestion. The moment that people is uh, capable to buy a, a, a new car, they will buy a new car. So this leads to, uh, to further congestion in Metro Manila. Next slide. So that our, our move, eh, tama po kayo, we should improve our last mile connectivity through these uh, walkways. Next slide. So ito lang po yung uh, very briefly yung plano ng uh, DOTR 
for uh, Metro Manila is uh, to promote itong uh, Metro Manila Greenways. Uh, I'll just uh, go go ahead, next slide. Ito yung Metro Manila Greenways, which you, you mentioned, medyo uh, ambitious talaga. It will connect uh, Quezon City all the way to uh, Paranaque through uh, walkways, greenways, bikeways. And uh, we have uh, faced the infrastructure so that we can prioritize kung saan yung pwede nating pondohan agad. So ito po yung network, yung color green. Uh, so total project sa cost... Ed, pwede ba natin concentrate muna sa EDSA? Yes, sir. On the next slide. Yeah, I would believe EDSA would be best first to... So ito po yung uh, concentration natin sa EDSA. Ang uh, target po natin dito, lahat ng mga congested MRT3 stations, yung mga may poor in, uh, connections sa ngayon, like Taft, yung uh, portion ng uh, Cubao. Yung portion ng Cubao, if you know what I mean, yung e MRT3 transfer to LRT2, you need to cut across uh, several malls para lang makalipat ng uh, MRT stations. So, we will build walkways along EDSA, along uh, Aurora Boulevard for that uh, ease of connection between the, those stations. So, yan po yung... Uh, uh, plano ng Department of Transportation and uh, we have already finished the feasibility studies, conceptual plans. Ang kulang na lang po, Mr. Chair, is uh, yung detailed engineering design and yung uh, the building of this uh, infrastructure, Mr. Chair. Do you have uh, photographs of what it will look like? Uh, my pictures ba kayo? Uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Chair. So ito po yung uh, sample uh, scheme for uh, EDSA Greenways. This is uh, connecting, for example, yung aming uh, uh, Cubao MRT3 to uh, Aurora Boulevard. So, yan po yung elevated walkways na gagawin. And uh, you can go back uh, dun sa, ano, sa BGC Greenways. The BGC Greenways. Yung uh, ano, perspective. So, that, uh, Mr. Chair, so almost uh, five meter na wide na elevated walkway yung gagawin natin. For example, this one will be built uh, from Buendia, uh, papasok ng BGC along uh, Kinwa Street sa gilid ng Forbes Park. So this will even uh, decongest, for example, Makinli. All of, all of the people are going through Makinli, pero kapag magkaroon ng good pedestrian connection from B, uh, Buendia Station, madidecongest natin yung Makinli. Maganda yan. Um, uh, Yusek, is there a plan of... Uh, a plan of... Probably privatizing the management of this. Because we've seen many times, and I'm not lobbying for anybody, but I've seen how government walkways have deteriorated into palengkes, no? With all due respect to... Hindi, hindi ka naman palagi dyan, Jojo. Eh. Magaling si Jojo, pero hindi lang palagi si Jojo nandyan. Yes. And many years to the past, we've seen na uh, congested na rin yung pedestrian, na uh, elevated pedestrian, nagiging palengke na rin. Parang divisoria na rin yung ano. So... Uh, I see such a beautiful structure, which I fear that mapabayaan po ito, baka magiging parang divisoria din yan. Um, if you, unless we're strict in the implementation of the, or in the maintenance of these walkways, like for example, if you come up with a consortium that will run it, uh, of course, government gets a, a payment for, pwede nyo ipabid out yung, yung rental, the highest rental uh, uh, application will be the one uh, given. At the same time, baka pwede ma-aircon na rin. Kasi pag ito, all weather, baka kung all, dapat all weather eh, kasi kung, hindi kasi kung, um, in many, many countries like Singapore, it's air-conditioned, Hong Kong, it's air-conditioned. Um, yung sa baba, sa ilalim, yung mga underpass. Yung sabi ko nga, um, it has to be, to be successful, it has to be all weather. Because kung hindi yan all weather at umulan, walang akyat dyan. At mahangin kasi yung ulan natin eh. Di ba? Pag binabagyo. But many times, this is the chicken or the egg scenario. Pag bumabagyo, hindi gumagalaw yung EDSA. Eh, wala namang akyat dyan. Pag basa naman at baha yan. So maybe we can come out with a system or a design wherein it can be an all weather design at hindi mainit. Kaya din ayaw maglakad ng tao. Alam mo, Pilipino spoiled. Gusto nila na sa aircon maglakad. But if we make it comfortable for them, they will uh, prefer to walk. I'd prefer to walk, actually. Kung meron tayong Makati uh, to dito sa Senate, uh, masarap maglakad. Yeah. So, is there, would that be an option? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, magandang idea po yun na ipa-bid out natin yung concessionaire ng operations and maintenance ng greenways. In fact, uh, a further step would be uh, 
uh, we can even uh, bid out a concessionaire who can also build, operate, and maintain the greenways. So kung uh, wala tayong pera na to construct some of this uh, green waste facility, baka pwede some of the drawings there, uh, you can uh, probably host a forum of uh, big... Uh, <laughs> ang problema ko dyan, Yusek, as mentioned earlier sa PPP, ang tagal! Kung hindi natin nilalagay yung budget na yun, abutin tayo ng siyam-siyam. Next president na po ito may implement. That's my only worry, because if you do a PPP or you do a build, operate, and transfer BOT, Nako, Diyos ko, aabot tayo ng siyam-siyam. Tapos yung bidder pa, yung natalo, magkakasuhan pa. So, feeling ko, um, that's why our position in the Senate when I gave the speech, let's fund it and let government, we have, uh, we're awash with cash. As a matter of fact, nagkakagulo na naman sa House of Representatives kasi hindi nila alam kung saan nila lalagay yung pondo. Eh tayo, klaro naman tayo dito, advocate-driven po kami. So, we want to put the funds in uh, uh, for these elevated walkways. Maybe, uh, you can assist us later on, USEC, on saan natin, we have to earmark it, prioritize, and identify. So, which are your priority areas? Uh, I like, maganda po yung Makati BGC Greenways to decongest McKinley. Because unless you put up a ramp on the Skyway, which I think the DPWH is planning to do, na pababa sa uh, BGC, matagalan pa yan. So, maganda po ito. And maybe a stretch of EDSA para makita lang nila. Yung Cubao, at sinabi mo, uh, nagja-jump palagi dyan sa Cubao and uh, these areas. Maybe we can ask uh, the GM of uh, MMDA to respond. Hi. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, po. Ma'am. Uh, actually, ang BOTR po, since uh, nung dumating kami dyan, 2007 MMDA, meron na kami usapan eh. Actually, may mga letters na kami regarding that one. Kasi nga, yung uh, sa elevated walkway nila, not only in Metro Manila, but the whole country. No? Kaya masyadong malaki yung budget. Nagkaroon uh, kami ng mga meetings na, na pag sa NCR, ibibigay nila sa MMDA para mas mabilis yung paggawa. No? Ang problem na nakikita ko lang, sir, for example, yung Makati to BGC, nung inano namin ni Mark yan, lalo tayong tatagal kasi yung mga right-of-way issue. Talagang hindi po mapayag mga exclusive village yan. Eh. That's why sabi nga naman, if we really want to start this soon, kaya namin siguro doable yung Guadalupe to Ortigas. No? Uh, hanggang kubaw kaya natin yan. Kasi wala masyado tayong ano, uh, magiging challenge as eh. Sir Jojo, um, GM, paano kung ma... I suggested one time, sino kausap ko na taga DP? Ah, si Ma'am Cathy din. Sabi ko, why don't we connect it to the side of the MRT? Ang sabi naman niya sa akin, ang problema, private concessionaire daw nagpapatakbo ng MRT. We have no power. Kasi alam ko yung exclusive subdivisions, ayon ng Bel Air, Ayaw ng Forbes na makabitan ng wall. But actually, in the design, pag naka-enclosed naman yan, on that side, you put all billboards, yung close talaga siya, hindi sila pwedeng sumilip doon sa mga bahay, parang feeling ko hindi naman sila magagalit. But kung, let's say, na ayaw talaga nila at mga big time talaga nakatira doon, pati mga ambassador, dito natin ilipat sa, idikit natin sa side na, sa gitna, which is uh, the MRT station, or the MRT is connected. We can build a uh, an L-shaped uh, walkway in that area, di ba? Hindi pwede yes, naman yun kahit na doon sa mga mga sinabing ayaw. Basta lagyan lang ng harang na hindi makikita yung yun gilid. Yun e, okay lang open dito sa kabila. Basta hindi makikita lang mga bahay dito sa kabila. Uh, sarado lang siya lahat. Talagang wala kang makita. Wall-wall siya sa, sa gilid ng uh, Actually, walkway. Actually, kung ipaprivatize mo yung pagtakbo niyan, Chairman, pag naka-close na talaga yan, dyan nila lalagay kasi para kumita sila. Diyan nila ilalagay yung billboards. Yung mga picture mo, mga Gatorade, mga ano ba yung nila sa, sa, sa wall ng, ano, ng uh, <laughs> walkway para may advertisement. Oh. Sir, uh, pwede kong dalhin sa inyo. Meron na kaming yes. pinropose dati. Pero sample lang ito, concept design. Hindi nyo pwedeng ipakita? Wala kayong soft copy? Wala, wala kaming soft copy. Eh. I mean, uh, I can just... Yes, yes, again. Yes, ano. So the gist of this, kasi alam ko si Senator Pacquiao still has to go to the other uh, yes. bill in the side. The gist of this, guys, no, is we're really pushing for this. The Senate, uh, together with our chairman and the Public Works uh, Committee, Senator Marcos, Senator Bong, all of them in unison, sabi na nila, kailangan natin to. Sabi ko kay Senator Pacquiao, hindi, para hindi siya makilala, hindi siya dumugan, pwede naman siyang lagyan ng mask tapos cap, tapos jogging-jogging siya doon, no? Alam ba, naka-mas Ma lang. Mag magkano bang uh, estimate project nito kung sa buong ano lang? Uh, EDSA. EDSA. 
I don't have the exact uh, figure, sir. Pero uh, nakalagay dito, Chairman, sa kanilang proposal, yung so, ang yung budget yung needed nila initially for 2020 is about 1.4 B. Pero I think yung 1.4 B, I think spread out to other yeah. areas yan. Baka mag-concentrate man tayo, Chairman, sa sa mga 1B dito sa EDSA, one stretch. Pag, you know, May naisip na akong uh, budget para dyan, hindi, para hindi tema ano. Bakit hindi natin i-include dyan doon sa IRR na ginawa doon sa uh, road board? Malaki yung punto ng road board, 50B, mahigit na yung uh, funding. Yes. 50B, sir, more than 50B na, di ba? Sir, sir, initially talaga doon magagaling yung funds yan eh. I-download nga dapat sa amin ng DOTR, yung sa NCR. Yes. Uh, actually, sir, very important, important talaga sa amin elevated walkways na yan. Para ang tao mawala sa kalsada. Yung talagang purpose na yan. Meron na tayong existing yan, sir, right now. Pero simple lang sa Ortigas, sa Pasay Taf. Nasa taas na yung mga tao yan eh. Doon naglalakad. Yeah, uh, can, can I ask the DPWH, uh, doon sa, hindi pa, sinalin nyo ba sa, ano, naglabas ng IRR ang, uh, ang, ang DPWH sa, na, about sa road board. Kasali ba doon yung, ano, budget doon? DPW. Yeah, DPW. Uh, actually, sir, pagkaalam ko lang, ha, may ginamit ding fund dyan para sa Manila Bay Rehab. Eh. Yung sa road board na yan. Uh, I don't know. Pwede natin gawin, Chairman. Uh, pwede natin tignan at musisihin yung budget na yan. Kasi nakalagay naman dyan yung income ng road board. Uh, ang, yan ang kukunan natin ng pondo para dito sa elevated view. Yun, yun nga ang naisip mo. Malaki doon. 50B mahigit eh. Ang pondo na eh. 50, 50B yung mahigit. Pwede, pwede natin kunin doon para para doon ako magjogging pag magawa na ila. Hindi ka na mo makilala, lagi ka na nang tapos yung face mask sa pollution. Sir, mayroon pa nga nag-ano sa amin dyan eh, nag-propose or tigas to Makati, yung elevated walkway nila pero mayroon walkway later. Tapos yung taas niya is a bike lane na nire-rent. Para from point to point, Uh, red ka lang bike, pagdating sa dulo, iwan mo na. Yeah. Before you continue, uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Senator, uh, former MDA chairman and now as Senator uh, uh, Tolentino. Tama po yung sinabi ni uh, chairman, si, ni GM, maganda nga may bike lane dun sa taas. If you can make it wide enough, na yung one half of the lane are people, uh, vocalators or tao po naglalakad, yung kabilang side, pwedeng bike and scooter yeah. para mabilis po yung, yung, yung takbo nila. Sir, ka, ano, ba, ano, ano, ano ba kalapad yung ano? Uh, okay. Uh, five yung dinesign po ng DOTR. Pero yung nag, ano nga po sa amin, nag-propose is five meters. Diba five meters is about here to the, the wall eh. More yeah, or less. Naman, yeah. uh, malaki. Malaki masyado. Para hindi ba makakaabala yan? Ah, uh, sir. If I may, sir, if I may. Actually, sir, ang ano nga namin, pwedeng, let's say kung 3 meters siya, talagang walkway lang, yung taas niya, yung nagpa-design sa amin, that's pwede natin implement siguro through the government. Yeah. Yung taas niya, may wall lang siya, pero yun yung bike lane. Tapos yung bubong niya ay solar. Para air yun yung loob. Yes, sir, yung pinakataas. Medyo lihis, medyo lihis ako sa usapin, ano? Pero napansin ko sa Economic Affairs Committee na ang um, ating um, DOTR manifest the largest increase in the budget from uh, 2019 to 2020. May I know what the MMDA, because they have not yet given us the breakdown, um, alin doon sa 117% increase ang uh, mapupunta sa MMDA o sa NCR area. Kasi ayaw naman natin bawasan yan. Uh, para sa akin, public transport pa rin ang pinakamahalaga. Alin doon sa maraming project at yung increase ng DOTR ay mapupunta sa NCR? Ma'am, Ma yung uh, under the budget of DOTR, most of the projects, uh, 90 uh, plus percent, of the projects of DOTR is, will be funding uh, yung railway natin. So itong mga greenways. Railway saan? Yes. Um, all over uh, Metro Manila, including uh, yung papuntang Clark and papuntang mga uh, yung uh, Mindanao railways natin. So yun hindi, yung... Hindi, hindi. Uh, NCR lang muna ang pinag-uusapan. 
week. Eh, siya nga lang ang pinagtatanungan natin eh. Uh, focus lang tayo kasi hindi pa nasasubmit ng DOTR. Mm -hmm. So, ano ba talagang ibibigay ninyo sa NCR? Napakalaki ng inyong increase. Kayo ang mm -hmm. pinakamalaking increase sa buong budget ng 2020. Ma'am, I can uh, give you the breakdown po. Um, I will uh, coordinate with the, our USEC for Railways. Sila kanila po kasi yung uh, uh, big bulk ng uh, project, yung uh, breakdown po ng uh, railway At project. At paano naman makikinabang sa railway ang uh, Metro Manila? Samantalang point to point naman to, may hintuan ba yan sa iba't ibang mga syudad ng Metro Manila? Ang pakiwari ko, diretsyo lang daw eh. Sabi, point to point lang at nagtitipid. Um, hindi naman po yung uh, ganun yung konsepto. Uh, under uh, railway uh, projects, nandiyan po yung mga subway natin. And uh, it will uh, have uh, numerous stations across uh, many municipalities along uh, Metro Manila. So marami pong uh, connectivity points yung ating mga railway stations. Oo, kung siguro maibigay yun, Makikita natin, kasi alam naman natin ang budget, mahirap kumuha ng panibagong pera o karagdagang pondo. Mas madali, kakaltasan yung ibang project. Ayaw na ayaw natin na makaltasan ang public transport. Para sa akin lang, with all due respect to the majority leader and to the chairman, ang pinaka-importante pa rin e public transport sa mga naninirahan ng Metro Manila. Ayaw natin bawasan yan. Kung maari nga yung road board katulad ni chairman o iba pang pondo, sana dyan na lang ang panggalingan ng EDSA Greenways. Huwag na huwag natin babawasan yung public transport. Pero sabi mo nga, puros Mindanao naman, e paano naman NCR naghihikahos na? Um, I'll, I will uh, provide me later, ma'am, yung, ano, yung breakdown ng uh, projects uh, focusing on uh, Metro Manila. Uh, I'll just get the information from our USEC for Railways, ma'am. Uh, meron rin kayong Metro Cebu kasi may makabagong Metro Cebu na papasok? Um, I just came there uh, yesterday, ma'am, uh, yung uh, Cebu uh, projects po natin. Sa Cebu po, ang uh, dalawa po yung uh, basket of uh, solutions na we're proposing for Cebu. Nandiyan po yung uh, Cebu BRT and then there's an also an unsolicited proposal for a monorail in uh, Cebu. So uh, those will be... Yeah, uh, pero hindi pa yan pasok sa budget. It's ang not tinatanong yet. ko, yung pasok na sa 2020. Yung mga sinasabi ninyo, mga plano-plano pa lamang, yung tinatanong ko, alin doon yung nasa 2020 na? Kasi...